All right, the final one. <coughs> Appreciate you guys sticking through this. It's been pretty uh, interesting, to be honest. It's like pretty, really interesting, to be honest. <laughs> what a trip. Hello and welcome to the final part of our fantastical tale. We sit on the eve of the rebirth of Square Enix's new world. Almost exactly three years after the original catastrophic launch, Eorzea was going to be getting a second chance. But this time, everybody knew it wasn't going to be getting a third. Man, how critical were people when it first came out, I wonder. Once Dalamud had struck, Yoshida-san moved the 1.x patch team into the main team working on A Realm Reborn, taking lessons from contemporary MMOs, feedback from players over the 1.x phase, and elements that work from the original version, they crafted a modern Final Fantasy XIV set in a vibrant world that reflected the energy of the franchise. And for Yoshida-san and some other members of the team, this was going to be a very public thing, as they took the short train ride from the office in Shinjuku to Shibuya to take part in a very special launch event. He took a train that morning to the event. Of course, there were rehearsals to be done beforehand, beforehand, so I left my house early. I was thinking to myself, oh yeah, we're about to release. At this time, uh, I was standing by the doors of the train. I was standing to the right side of the door, and to my left, I saw this college student. Green colored clothes, I remember. He walked close to me in very small voice, he said. ミシヨシダ、ミシヨシダ、ミシヨシダ、ミシヨシダ、ミシヨシダ、ミシヨシダ、ミシヨシダ、ミシヨシダ、ミシヨシダ、ミシヨシダ、ミシヨシダ、
but considering the stunning reversal of fortune that Square has achieved here, it seems like anything is possible. So what was it like then on your end after, you know, years of working on this game, having the launch, basically being required to work on two separate games at the same time, patching that is fucking one crazy. and then building an entirely new one, almost in secret for a large part of it, to then see, like, what was it like reading reviews and reading message boards when people were like, oh, fuck, they did it? It was, yeah, I mean, we were just as surprised. I mean, not as surprised because, again, we're, it, it, was, it was definitely different. You know, in those months before releasing the original, I mean, I knew that the game wasn't in good shape. And so it's kind of, you're lying to yourself, trying to say, no, this is going to be good. They're going to like this part. They're going to like this part. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. But with A Realm Reborn, playing it's like, this is a really good game. I mean, you're playing it and enjoying it. You know, but there's still that little bit in the back of your mind that's like, you know, and it's what we're... Do we even know, know what we're a good told, game is anymore? <laughs> is that once the game has been reviewed, even if you try to rebuild it, everyone's going to remember the old. They're not going to look at the new. And Metacritic never forgets. When 14 came out, the original, and it was maybe people like, okay, I think, you know, I'm a, I'm a hardcore you know, offline Final Fantasy guy, but I'll try out this new one. But then, okay, it's terrible. See, I knew it. It's terrible. They're not going to want to come back for a second time because like, oh, I already played that. It was terrible. And so there sure. was just this feeling that even if it's a really great game, no one's going to play it. They're, all, they're just going to like brush it off because it's the, oh, it's the, it's the bad Final Fantasy Online that I tried you know, in beta and it sucked, so I'm not going to play it anymore. And so yeah, we were afraid of that. But then, wow, it was just, I mean, servers breaking on, not breaking, but like servers getting so packed with people in, in those first few days and just and then seeing the reviews come in and you know it, they saved and then they start saying things like you, know, you saved the franchise and you, know, you saved the series and and I don't know remembering what it was like you know at their launch of 1.0 and then just being able to because who gets to re-experience a bad launch it's something you don't get in the game industry and especially in MMOs. And, and we did, and it was a great experience to be able to say, it was just that vindication of like all of that extra work that we had put in. It was what Yoshida-san had promised us. If we worked hard and we did this right, that in a year and a half's time, you know, we can do this. And a lot of people didn't believe him, and you know, a normal person probably wouldn't believe him. <laughs> but, True. I mean, maybe that's why we were able to do it, because all of the abnormals remained and made something that was, you know, literally impossible happen. Servers are so crowded, we saw people not being able to play. They had gone out of their way to purchase the game, but they couldn't play. It's ridiculous. Of course, it's an online game, so you have to be able to connect to the servers in order to play. Or even worrying about reviews, the fact that we were creating a situation where people bought the game but couldn't play was shocking to me. We didn't anticipate so many people coming to play, uh, so one of the contributors was one of the contributing factors, but before I could even react to some of the reviews, I think I was more focused on trying to rectify the situation. だから今日がうんぬんの前にまずちゃんとゲームに接続した遊べるようにしなきゃっていうことばっかりが当時の一ヶ月半ぐらい出荷を停止したりとか販売を停止したりとかそれしか全然覚えてないです。With most other genres, this would be the part of the story where we fade to black and rolled credits, but such luxuries don't exist in the world of massively multiplayer online games. In fact, after the release of A Realm Reborn, or 2.0 as they call it internally, the team applied the same content-rich patching schedule they had undertaken with 1.0, releasing a significant 2.x patch to the game every three to four months. Over the next two years, these patches progressed the story of AOR, added in epic raids and new modes such as 72-player PvP battles. But just like before, while the team was working on these 2.x patches, they were concurrently building an updated version of the game, the first expansion pack, Heavensward. <laughs> October, maybe September. Some of the dead team members came up to me and said, Nimo. Yoshia-san, 
he told us uh, that it would get a little easier after ARR launch. I said, uh, you know, for an MMO that's really as big as scale as what we're trying to accomplish. First initial sprint's gonna be all the way up to the release of the first expansion. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, it was what was in our minds was, you know, not having another letdown. Don't take for granted that the rebuild was a success. We can't just expect our users to say, oh, they're going to release expansion, so we can do whatever we want, and it doesn't, doesn't matter, they'll buy it, ha, ha, ha. Um, you know, there was none of that sense. One good thing that came out of the failed launch is that it's instilled into, you know, the, the, the developers, all of the developers' minds that, you know, we have to always strive to be better. We can't, you know, let our guard down. It, it's, it's, in our, it's in everyone's mind. And it's always uh, working back there. We don't want to repeat that. And because of that, everyone is like always hey, on the top you, of Hey, thank you, Daddy. Uh, UVI, is appreciate you again, man. Now, appreciate the donuts, both of you. Years, I mean, it? yeah. The old guard, yes. We all have that. We all have that. Um, but it's not all the old guard anymore. Um, people have moved off onto other projects. Some people have left the company to go freelance, you know, explore new opportunities. Um, a lot of new people have come in. And so um, a lot of people, yeah, don't remember you know, what happened in 1.0. Oh, because oh they you were summer there. children. That's right, <laughs> exactly, exactly. And you know, us old timers can tell them, well, when I, back in my day, we did it. And they'll be like, uh-huh, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, and you know, sometimes it does feel like that. There's always the chance that, you know, you can just get too full of yourself and not do 100%, not learn from your mistakes, and that, you know, the community was like, no, we're done. And, you know, we were lucky to be, to be given a second chance. Um, we were really lucky to have that second chance actually succeed. Um, I don't know, third time, I don't know if I want to, you know, press my luck any further. It's, it's, it's not a good, fun situation to be in. Um, the things that I've learned over these past seven, eight years working on 11, the original and the new and the expansions Jesus. is something that I'm going to carry with me to all future projects, as it will with, I mean, all of the other devs that have done that. Um, a piece of that Final Fantasy 14 1.0, a piece of that, uh, you know, ARR and the expansions will be with all of them. And, um, you know, hopefully they'll be able to use that um, in all their future projects. Heaven's Word was another win for the team. Critically praised and loved by the community, it helped push cumulative subscriptions for the game beyond 5 million. Jesus. In fact, the amount of players in Eorzea has kept rising. Final Fantasy XIV というゲームをプレイし続けていなければついていけなくなるとかその一度やめてしまったら戻れないっていう風に絶対にならないようにっていうのが そう考えた時に遊びたい時に遊んでメジャーアップデートが来たら一気に遊んで少し落ち着いて他のゲームも遊んだりあの家族サービスをしたりでまたメジャーが来たらそれでいいと思ってるしこれからのMMOはそうじ
and some changes to the battle system. Stormblood will also mark the end of the game's lifetime on the PlayStation 3, but of course, in the intervening years, the team has since launched the game on the PlayStation 4. Final Fantasy XIV had been a financial disaster for Square Enix. Subscriptions were turned off for most of the 1.x era, and the company poured significant funds and trust into the team tasked with its rebirth. The importance of this franchise to the company is mirrored by its importance to its players and of course the development team. This is a group of people who have dedicated years into ensuring that this game came back from the dead. Yoshida-san says he only needs about four hours sleep a night. I asked him about his social life. He says he doesn't really remember anything except work. <laughs> he speaks fondly of those players that stuck with the team, those warriors of light that were saved at the end of 1.0. His respect for fans of this game and all Final Fantasy fans is clear to see. The realm of Eorzea is totally different now. A bustling, vibrant place full of stories, quests and adventurers. A world expanded upon even more with the release of Stormblood. But the old world, the story of 1.0, the fall of Dalamud and the people who survived the cataclysm will always live on. Those who were there, be them player or developer, will forever be bound together by that experience. Instead of a lot of games will create, you know, the, these myths for their games, we have a myth that actually happened, but because it happened so long ago and only a few people saw it, most of the new players now, they look at back and it's like, did it really happen? Did, what is this battle with the White Raven and Riven Road? And it was just this grand battle, you know, all different levels and this, you know, dimensional rifts. And it sounds like an actual myth, but it's, like, it's not just a story we made up for this, you know, it's actually happened. And, you know, as the game progresses and new players come on, I mean, it's, it, it's further and further back in history that this thing, this really cool thing happened. And so, I mean, that visual works cutscene, I mean, I remember, I mean, watching it, I'm just like, you know, goosebumps all over. I mean, I, I was, I'm watching with all of these other, you know, like the directors and producers and, you know, the, the director of the visual works, and we're all sitting there and they're all watching it, and I'm just watching them, like, I've got, like, tear in my eyes. Oh, yeah, it's dust and I mean it was that powerful because it kind of encompassed not only you know what the character went through it was an image of what we as developers had done as well at the beginning we're all you know let's do this it's gonna be an adventure we're like that first cutscene where you know with the party that goes out and they have their guild leave and they go out and they fight the Morble and that's that's us at the beginning and then the release hits you and you're down I mean, then you have that cutscene where it's just like everyone's working together to make something new and then it fails, but no, it didn't fail. And ah, and you're just, and all of the memories of, you know, the past years, the good and the bad kind of all come together and, you know, just so overwhelming. And that's you know, pretty much the reaction Then when we finally release it to the public that we got. I mean, so many people, I just remember the forums, checking out the forums that day. I mean, people were just like, I've been in tears all day. I've watched it 10 times. And, and to see that, you know, that everyone felt the same way. It wasn't just, you know, the development team. It's that you have these, this hardcore group of very, very loyal fans that, you know, they believed in the game. We believed in the game. We stuck together. We were able to build, you know, this new thing that's not just for us, but it's opening up the doors for a whole new audience. But, you know, remember, we were there first. We're the ones that, you know, that stood by it and we're the ones that did this. And, you know, they have the pride in that. The, those players, those, those warriors of light that were, you know, the before Meteor guys. You know, Yoshida-san in interviews will always talk about, you know, those people that supported us and we couldn't have done it. I mean, it sounds so cliche. Oh, we couldn't have done it without your support. N literally, we could not have done it. Literally, we could not have done it. I mean, if there was, those people hadn't remained, we just would like, no, let's forget it. We're not gonna do it. Um, we wouldn't have put as much effort in. It would have just been, okay, yeah, whatever. That's just free to play. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Don't sometimes. Back when, you know, 1.0 nice came out, and could you ima have imagined that three, four years later, you'd be in a fan event with thousands of people in Germany? No, I don't really imagine that. Yeah, I mean, one day, I mean, yeah, we were, I mean, always saying one day we want to run a big fun, fun event. We were, I mean, actually dreaming to have a huge fun festival I mean, in the future at the time. But actually, yeah, we, we made it. So yeah, that was really great. Some dreams come true. Yes, yes. <laughs> Damn. Come on.
ただ自分あのスクエア長いんですけれどもあんまり変な言い方ですけどこう会社に対して帰属意識というか,なんかそこはあまりなくてですねあのやっぱりゲーム作るって誰と一緒に作るかがすごくあの大切でそこが一番重要だなと思っていて今回のプロジェクトは本当に組んでみたいというスタッフと組んですごく大きなことがやられてすごい。楽しいかったし楽しいですね。って感じで<笑>はい。あのまあ強調したいことがあるとすれば、その初日に 1.0 の話をしてましたけど、誰か一人そのもしくはデベロップメントチームがということではなくてやっぱり今でも本当に。あの会社自体の大きな過ちがその全,て全ての悪い部分が「ファイナルファンタジー14」で出てしまったっていうそ,のまあそれはリリースって意味のデータではなくてそ,のそれが全て爆発したのが「ファイナルファンタジー14」のオリジナルバージョンだったんじゃないかって本当に強く思ってるのででも今そのまあ14のリバンプを会社全体としてやって15がリリースできて机には少しずつ変わってきたと思ってるしもっと変わらなきゃいけないと思ってるもしかすると少し安心してる人たちも今いるのかもしれないけどまだまだ変わらなきゃいけないと思ってるのでなんかその辺りがうまく伝わってると。あのいいなとは思いますこれはあのー、なんだろうスクエアエニックスっていう会社が作るゲームに期待してもらってる人が世界中にたくさんいると思うんですけど僕もそうだったからでもまだまだスクエアエニックスってこのレベルじゃないじゃんもっと上いけるじゃんって思ってるくれてるはずなのでそのためにはもっと変わらなきゃいけないしチャレンジもしなきゃいけないと思ってるのでそういった要素も今回のそのお話でうまく伝わってくれるとあの嬉しいかなとは思います。僕らはそういうつもりでやってますっていうメッセージが少しでも、ね、出ていけばいいなとは。プレイヤーの皆さんと会社が望めばそうなってると思いますし、プレイヤーの皆さんやあの会社が他のゲームを作れって望んでくれれば他のゲーム作ってるかもしれないですし、両方一緒にや同時にやってるかもしれないし。僕は少なくともスクエアニックスって今会社の,あのスタッフで自分の会社なわけではないのでやっぱプレイヤーの皆さんファンの皆さんがスクエアニックスに何を期待するのかっていうのを会社がどう考えるかだと僕は思ってるんでまあもちろん自分で作ってみたいゲームがないわけじゃもちろんないですけどまあ好きなものを作りたいならね会社辞めて自分で会社作って作ればって思っちゃうんで。まあ、望まれる限りは頑張ろうと思いますけどそろそろね<笑>プロデューサーとディレクターのどっちかは誰かやってくれないと思いますけどね。<笑>はい。